Hey there, so today I'm going to show you how to play with soul and feeling. I'm going to give you three tips and I'm going to give you some techniques that will really help you to take simple melodies and infuse them with more feeling and more soul. But first I'm going to play a song to demonstrate how you can use those techniques. So why not play something from the GOAT himself, Hank Marvin. So Hank Marvin from The Shadows, he's like the grandfather of instrumental guitar. <laughs> He really pioneered that kind of crying sound. That kind of crying sound of the Stratocaster. In fact, he was the first person to play a Stratocaster in England. And he was a real master of melody and those beautiful soulful licks. So I'm going to play a song. This is this is a kind of a deep cut, actually. It's from one of his later albums. The song's called Captain's Log. So let me play the song for you. So let's get into it. So tip one, use space. So a great tip is just to take your hands off the guitar in between phrases, you know, so like in that song, for example, you can drop your hand for a couple of beats. And that idea of just using space, it immediately creates phrasing and it creates the feeling of just like, almost like you're saying something rather than just a constant flow of notes, you know. And that's cool, but it just it just feels like you're kind of rambling. Whereas when you create that phrasing, it really feels a lot more powerful. All right, tip number two, play with dynamics. So going from playing soft to playing loud or from going slow to fast is a really powerful way of expressing feelings, you know. So, for example, in that song, it starts soft with a lot of feeling. And then as the song builds... So he's kind of using those dynamics. And again, you know, playing very slowly and melodically. And then adding in those little flurries of speed. It's a really good way of creating feeling. Okay, so the next one is when you're actually playing, if you want to create feeling, try moving your body. Because what you want to do is when you're playing is you want to be expressing yourself and you want to be getting into the flow. You can't play with feeling 
unless you're in the flow. And that really means being lost in the music. So that's why it's really good. You know, it's like, you know, when people are making weird faces when they play, it's good because it gets you over your self-consciousness. It gets you over yourself. And it's really good to do that. So you've got to find ways to get yourself into the flow. And a really, a really good way to do that is just to kind of feel the beat, feel the music in your body. Okay, so let's get into some techniques. The first one is vibrato. And basically the sound of vibrato, it mimics the sound of a human voice. You know, it just gives, it definitely gives it that soul. And a great hack for that, which is what Hank Marvin does, is use the vibrato. Because it's just a beautiful sound. And basically you'll see when Hank Marvin's playing and he uses a strap like that one I've got hanging up on the wall there. But his hand is on that tremolo. And basically, even, even if you're hardly using it, just having that little, it almost like kind of gives it just that slight kind of warble, which gives it a beautiful sound. And you can be more, you can be more and less expressive with it. You can just do that gentle kind of rocking. Or you can really kind of go for it, like Dwayne Eddy. But you don't have to use the vibrato, you can use your fingers too, you know, I think B.B. King. Okay, so the next one, this again, it kind of mimics the human voice and that's really what gives it soul, I think, is, is, is making it speak. And this is using bends. So there's lots of different types of bends. So let me show you a few ones that are really good. So Hank Marvin does a lot of these bends on the second string. And really the second string is a great place to bend. It's probably the easiest place to bend the notes because the tension on it is quite tight, but it's not as tight as the first string. And then the size of the string means that it's easy to bend. The first string is very tight. It's quite hard to bend. And then the third string is looser, but it's heavy. So the, the bends are kind of darker on the third string. You can really do these nice kind of responsive bends. And, and Hank does a lot of these little bends where you just go up and down. It's like a half step bend. And they have a great sound. Very responsive. Of course, you can do whole step bends as well. And even one and a half step bends. But those half step bends are a great place to start. So right in that song, you know, this song's in, in the key of B flat. It's got a very simple melody. So he's, he's doing that little bend right there. And when you're playing in flat keys, uh, it can be a little bit confusing if you're not familiar with playing in flat keys. So a little hack is go to the relative minor. So if you're playing in the key of B flat, it's the same as playing in the key of G minor. Which you're probably used to, you used to. So if you're playing a song in the key of B flat, you can just jump down three frets and play right here. Okay, so another type of bend is the what's called the oblique bend and they usually do these on the on the third string or, or the second string but basically you hold down a note on the second string and then you bend against it on the third string like this and that gives a really it's almost like a country bend but it gives it a very soulful sound because you're bending against that note it gives it that kind of crying sound and you can do a bend and release so those are those are very soulful bends. You can do them all over the place. You can do them on the second string as well. And this song goes up here. So they're called oblique bends, and the idea there is there is you're bending against a, a static note. Another type of bend is the pre-bend, which is again, it gives you that kind of crying sound, and that's where you actually bend the note before you pick it. So you get this sound. soulful sound when you bend up and then you pluck it and you bring it down so try that one that's a really good one
Okay, another thing that you can do to create a soulful feeling when you play is actually kind of harmonize yourself. And the way you do this is with intervals. So Hank does this a lot in this song, where he uses this idea of sliding sixths, which is like this. And it's a beautiful sound because the sound of a sixth has such a pretty and soulful sound. So there's basically two shapes for a sixth. You've got the minor sixth shape, which is like this. Basically it means that those two notes are a sixth apart. One, two, three, four, five, six, like this. And you can just slide that shape around, like, so it's like this. Slide it around. And then there's the major sixth, which is not this, but this shape here, where you're on the same fret. So you can choose whether it's a minor or a major sixth shape, and it's dependent on the key you're in. There's different kind of patterns for it, but in this in this case, for B flat or G minor, sound they have and then kind of like another counterpart to that is a similar idea instead of two strings apart you're just one string apart and that's when you're using thirds and Hank Marvin does that a lot as well and they have a beautiful sound too They're, it's similar to sixths but it's a it's a slightly different effect and you can even use thirds as well like when you like when you hammer on if you're playing a double stop That sound right there is a third, where you're two frets apart. And with thirds, with thirds, there's two shapes. There's, there's two frets apart like this, and there's one fret apart. So again, you can find these little patterns. And you can just use your ears to kind of find that pattern. Those thirds and sixths add a lot of texture and a wonderful sound. So final thoughts on playing with soul. It's really all about expressing who you are through your music. So everyone's got a different shape and a different character to their soul. So being authentic to yourself and finding the music that really resonates and starting to collect some of these ideas, like these different tips and tricks, you know, test out these different things and find out if you like the sound they make and if it feels soulful to you, and then you can start to collect these. But then what you want to do is really make them your own and hone them and weave them into your own unique way of playing the guitar. All right, so that's it. I hope you enjoy listening and I hope you have a little bit of fun trying some of these bends, um, trying some of these different licks, getting your old vibrato going. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and share it with your friends. And remember, turn it up and we'll see you next time. Bye.